Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's great to see many people for, from so many disciplines, from so many countries, uh, coming together today to reflect on data protection. After all, climate change an needs an international approach, and that's because our deltas are still far too vulnerable, not only because of the rising sea levels, but also because of water shortage in times of drought, of health complaints due to heat stroke and soil subsidence through uh, groundwater use. So this is why we need not only flood prevention experts, but also innovative city planners, architects who know about climate-proof -proof constructions, and we need researchers who can calculate how many green roof roofs and water plazas we need in big cities. <coughs> And what we need is a worldwide coalition of Delta thinkers. So I've got a part of the Delta thinkers here together this morning, but we need more Delta thinkers. And I believe that Delta protection should feature far more prominently on the international agenda. And in the words of President Obama, you can ignore the facts, but you can't deny them. And he said that before Hurricane Sandy, Sandy but after Sandy, people began to listen. Because climate change is happening now, and action is needed, especially in the world's deltas where more than half of the global population lives and works, and where most of the global economic value is generated. And since the first deltas in times of climate change conference four years ago, the urgency has only increased. None of the past four years has been without large-scale floodings. And who? would have, have thinked, dare to think, back in 20, uh, 2010, that Manhattan would be underwater two years later. It happened. And I saw the consequences for myself. And I was greatly affected by the impact it had and the resilience shown by ordinary people. And yet it was worrying to see how poorly we are prepared for climate change, not only in New York, but everywhere. And the worst response to such a disaster is to try and rebuild everything exactly as it was before. And I can understand that um, because um, uh, it is something you have to do uh, if you want to be ready for the next storm season. You have to rebuild your protection system. But to invest only in repairs is not enough. And to avoid this short-term uh, reflex, we need to take action before the disaster strikes. And I think that New York's Rebuild by Design program sets a good example for us all. It's not only about keeping water out, but also about designing the areas differently. How can we give water the room it needs? How can we better protect our vital infrastructure? Very important questions. And thankfully, there are more examples of climate-proof design. Take the joint development of a Delta plan for the Mekong Delta in Vietnam, for instance, which is being done with Dutch help. Or a similar Delta plan for Bangladesh, which is also being developed as we speak. And I shouldn't forget my own country, where new measures are always needed. 60 years ago, the Netherlands experienced horrendous floodings, and the decision was taken to launch several large-scale Delta projects to seal off the land from the sea. And last week, the Dutch government took another major step to combat flooding, a new Delta program, which will improve our protection for the next 50 years. Why? Because now more and more people are living and working in the areas prone to flooding. And the previous plan was drawn up after a disaster. This one has drawn up to avoid a similar disaster to happen in the future. And this new plan is not based only on concrete or steel structures, as we did in the 60s and the 70s, but it's also based on smart land design. So we want to increase our resilience and be better prepared, prepared for a rise in sea level, for more rain, for hotter weather, for drier weather. And one part of this involves risk evaluation. Until now, the different areas in the Netherlands had different degrees of protection. And that's going to change. Everyone in a country is going to benefit from the same basic level of protection. 
the risk of death by flooding must be not higher than one in 100,000 every year. And in places where the risks are especially high because they are home to more people or business or important infrastructure, safety standards will be raised further. And by providing more focus protection, we will ensure a 20-fold reduction in the economic risks related to flooding and a 45-fold drop in the chance of a flood disaster that kills 1,000 people. And why am, am I telling you this? It's not because I'm proud of this plan. I am, of course. But it's mainly because this plan was only possible thanks to new knowledge and insights, which were often of international nature. Knowledge about how to calculate the risk of death from flooding. Knowledge about climate. Institutions like Knowledge for Climate helped us better understand climate change. And about innovative and uh, land design, heat resistance construction, and how to make room for water in cities. So the lesson is this. This plan was only possible thanks to cooperation between the worlds of research and practice. It came not only from the world of disaster risk reduction, but also from the world of climate adaption. And I believe in this collaboration between these disciplines. And that is why this conference is also a call to action. Don't wait until a disaster strikes. Don't simply patch up the holes. Plan and design innovatively. Use each other knowledge and put it into practice. So finally, there's a common task to which we must all contribute, especially now that climate change adaption is established in a policy area in the EU. All EU member states are now in the process of drawing up an adaption strategy which must be ready before 2017. And for this, we need knowledge and insight. So I warmly welcome the European Commission's invitation for the Netherlands to host the fourth International Climate Change Adaption Conference in 2016. And this will be a major Congress centered on using knowledge concerning every aspect of climate change. So I hope to see you all there, of course, with even more insights and ideas and concrete results than now. And I'd like to close with some wise words from the governor of Washington, Mr. Jay Inslee, and he said, we are the first generation to feel the impact of climate change, and we are the last generation that can do something about it. I couldn't agree more. Thank you very much.